Welcome to St. Louis Cardinal Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. The Reds are in town. The Cardinals off to a fast start, winning seven of their first ten games. Lance Berkman back in the lineup tonight, as is David Freeze. Glad you're with us, Rick Horton, alongside Al Roboski. And now these two teams have played already this year. The Cardinals winning two out of three in Cincinnati. Everything has gone very well for the Cardinals. They won two out of three in Cincinnati. They win two out of three against Milwaukee and the Cubs at home. But look at as you look inside the numbers, they've out hit the Reds, they out slugged them, and they pitch better than the Reds. That's how you win games. We're going to take a closer look at what's going on in side the Central Division. We'll do that when we come back on Fox Sports Midwest. Cardinals hosting the Cincinnati Reds. Very pleasant evening for baseball. The Cardinals have done very well within the division so far in 2012. They've gotten power from unlikely sources. Shane Robinson went deep against the Milwaukee Brewers as the Redbirds won two out of three there. John Jay does the same, this time against Johnny Cueto. Tonight's starting pitcher, the Cardinals won two out of three in Cincinnati. Then it was Matt Carpenter delivering against the Cubs as the Cardinals won two out of three against Chicago. Brandon Phillips has been injured back in the lineup tonight. Cardinals and the Reds more after this. The National League Central saw some major changes this past offseason. We'll look at some of the most impactful departures from the division a bit later in the series. But up first, it's the five most impactful additions to the division. Here's Pat Paris. In the last four years, four different teams have won the NL Central. And with all the offseason moves within the division, it's up for grabs once again. While the division saw the departure of some of baseball's biggest names, the additions might actually make the teams more competitive. Here are the five most important additions to the NL Central for 2012. Alex Gonzalez hit 24 home runs back in 2004, but it's his defense that will make Milwaukee more competitive in 2012. At shortstop, Gonzalez has saved the second most runs in baseball over the last two seasons. Unieski Betancourt, the guy he's replacing, saved the second fewest runs in baseball during that same time. Carlos Beltran is a six-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner, but will be 35 years old at the end of April. If healthy, as he was in his All-Star campaign just a year ago, Beltran can prove there's something left in the tank. It wasn't that long ago that he was one of the most feared of all the Cardinals' opponents. Aramis Ramirez isn't new to the NL Central. In fact, he's the longest tenured player in the division's history. But even though he has the tall order replacing Prince Fielder, he might just be the perfect guy to do it. Last year, Fielder had just one more RBI against St. Louis than Ramirez. But Ramirez hit 343 against the Cardinals. Fielder, 233, 110 points lower. If anyone can snap the longest World Series drought in baseball, it's Theo, who helped snap the second longest World Series drought just eight years ago. But Theo had a running start in Boston with a few future Hall of Famers. In Chicago, he's got, well, a lot of work to do. 2011 was supposed to be his year, until it wasn't. The only pitch he threw was the ceremonial pitch before game one of the World Series. As with most Tommy John patients, Wainwright's control is likely to lag behind a few months as his innings could be limited. But at age 30, it wouldn't surprise anyone if his name is back on that Cy Young ballot in 2012, making him the most impactful addition to the NL Central. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By your Mid-America Chevy dealers, the number one selling brand in St. Louis. Find us at stlchevy.com. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Center, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. And by Steak and Shake, just no equal. Welcome inside Bush Stadium. Stadium built in 2006, already seen two world championships. Kyle Loesch is ready. For the Reds, and this game is underway. Sinker at the knees, strike one. It's got to be a good sign for Kyle keeping the ball down at Patton and Sinker. You see the start he's off to. Four times in his career, he started out 2 0. 
or actually he's pushed that to three and zero, but never started a season four and zero. Little bloop to shallow right field. Back goes the second baseman Descalzo to retire Brandon Phillips, and we're underway. Take a look at the Reds' batting order here tonight. Brandon Phillips back in the lineup. He's had hamstring issues. Zach Cozart's hot. Joey Votto, Scott Rowland, Jay Bruce, Ryan Ludwig, the former Cardinal, Drew Stubbs, the center fielder, Hannigan, and the pitcher, Johnny Cueto, for three-time manager of the year, Dusty Baker. I'm sure Dusty is saying, my team is not this bad offensively. As they are really struggle, a lot of anemic batting averages, other than Cozart, who's the, now the hitter. And he is off to an outstanding start. He had 324 last year in limited playing time, just 37 at bats after being recalled from the minor leagues. And a very good pace for him so far. Change up for Kyle Loesch is his first strikeout. Jose Okendo helps with the Cardinals defense and here they are Holiday Jay and Beltron in the outfield. David Fries back in the lineup at third for call the shortstop Descalzo and Berkman on the right side Yadier Molina does the catching and Kyle Loesch is the pitcher that's your Dobbs Cardinals defense. Swing and a miss strike one to Joey Votto always dangerous. Two thousand and ten most valuable player in the National League signed a huge contract extension. Check swing Loesch has it on one hop. Can't get much easier than that for Kyle Loesch in the first one two three for call Beltron and Holiday when we come back. No score bottom of the first Mike Matheny and Mike Aldretti the Cardinals ready for their half of the first the Cardinals and Reds have already hooked up that came in Cincinnati. That was against Homer Bailey first game of the series first it was holiday. And then David Fries hits a two run shot to right field and finished up with Yadier Molina back to back pitches for three home runs in the first inning and a four nothing lead. Here's the Cardinals lineup here tonight. Rafael for call the switch hitter will bat first followed by another switch hitter Carlos Beltran and holiday Berkman and freeze in the middle. Yadier Molina John Jay who hits Cueto very well Daniel Descalzo and Kyle Loesch a lineup for the Cardinals against the right hander Johnny Cueto. Uh, Johnny's 26 years of age now he had seven shot out innings in his first start and by the way that's the only win by a red starter this season. He did pitch against the Cardinals pretty effective until he kind of got tired out after a 14 pitch at bat by Kamatsu and the Cardinals scored three runs. It was a 3 3 tie when he left that ball game. They eventually won it on a walk off in the ninth. And Cueto is good. He can be very good and he misses on the first delivery to for call it was at 293. Roland taking the bunt away from for call at third. And another fastball high 2 and 0. See Scotty Rowland way off the line, but playing in on the grass. Recall likes to slap the ball the other way, and he takes a big hack there, comes up empty. Call a switch hitter. His natural side is right handed. He's batting 500 from that side, four for eight, just 242 left handed. Pulls back the bunt attempt and takes a strike on the outside corner. And watching Cueto pitch, he reminds me, Al, a little bit yeah. of Louis, Louis Tion. So started doing that uh, a couple years ago, and he, before injury took him out. Popped up. Who wants it? The shortstop, Cozart. The only non -glover, gold glover on the infield. Maybe just be a matter of time for him, but this is an outstanding defense for Cincinnati. Ludwig and Bruce throw well in the corner outfield position. Stubbs with speed, but Roland, Phillips, and Votto on the infield with 12 gold gloves to their credit. Scotty owns eight of them. And the interesting thing about Cozart is he's ranked coming in as the third best prospect in their minor league system. Number one is their backup catcher, and number two is another shortstop, 
that had over 100, 100 stolen bases in the minor leagues last year. Carlos Beltran was hit on the right forearm by Paul Mahalam and had to be taken from that game, but he's back in the lineup today. So the Cardinals actually with three players who've had minor nagging injuries. Beltran's one and Berkman and Freeze all in the lineup tonight. Oh, wasn't that nice? You know, you had Berkman out for the entire Cup series. Beltran missed the final game, but then Freeze missed the last two games, and the Cardinals showed their bench is pretty good. Think anybody brought up Wally Pip to Lance Berkman? Uh, maybe Berkman himself. Probably. He actually told uh, Mike Matheny after the four hits by Carpenter and five RBIs that, you know, maybe I can't get back in the lineup, and Mike kind of laughed. His paycheck dictates he's back in the lineup. Wally Pip, of course. I think he had a headache, did he? He had not? a headache. He said, let the kid play. And the kid's name? Lou Gehrig. He played a long time. And then he went 2,000 plus or 2,100 plus games. And nobody remembers Wally Pip other than the guy that let him have his first game. There's a long one to ride off the bat of Beltron. It's deep. And it's gone. Home run number four for Beltron as a Cardinal. And it's 1-0 Redbirds. Everybody wonders how do you replace Albert Pujols? You don't replace him, but what you do is you ask, ask Beltron to have another All-Star campaign. You ask David Freeze to stay healthy, and his production, you know, would increase. Molina is a much better hitter. Holiday stay healthy, and when you look at it all, they make up the difference and account for the production that Albert had. Brings in Matt Holliday. Off to a bit of a slow start for him. Average just at 200. He's hit into some bad luck, however. A few line outs here and there. There's a hard hit ball in the gap in left center field. This ball is down against the wall in left center. Matt Holliday follows the homer with a double in the gap. Beltron has given the Cardinals the lead, and here's the delivery from Cueto. And you can see he's sort of set up on the inside part of the plate. Little breaking ball coming right into the swing plane. Holiday, another dangerous hitter. Didn't get in far enough or far enough away. Gets a good part of the, the bat on the, the ball and one hops the wall. Cueto's breaking pitch has improved from his rookie season, but really a, a fastball changeup pitcher. Changeup really his best delivery. Lance Berkman hasn't hit Cueto well, but he's walked seven times against Cueto. Berkman always has that high on base percentage because he's very selective. Good eye. Playing deep for Berkman. Five game hitting streak for him. And it'll be interesting how much Lance pushes himself today. He says he feels much better as he told us in the pregame show with his calf. But you'd have to think there's at least some question in his mind. Oh, but Carpenter will be ready. He's ready. <laughs> it's a little easier to. You know, to not get the start after you had a four four hit game, five RBIs. You sit on that bench, you go, okay, I'm ready, Skipper. You want to call upon me, but the thoroughbred is in the lineup. One and two, the count to Berkman. Cueto doesn't like the sign and asks Hannigan to go through them again with Holiday the runner at second. The 
The one two. Matt Carpenter a big game against. The Chicago Cubs and puts him in pretty good company with some other Cardinal rookies with four hits and far five RBIs in a single game. I can see last time was Fred Whitfield in 62 Les Bell back in the 20s. So select company. You can see quite a few times Hannigan is set up. You know his target way up. And Cueto likes to get a lot of hitters to swing through his fastball up. It's a good good if you're ahead in the count and you could throw the ball up there and get a hitter to chase up in the strike zone is not a very uh, desirable location for a pitcher up above the strike zone can be a swing and miss Reds with a slight shift for Berkman as many teams do Cozart nearly behind second base rolling way off the line at third for this 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Lance. Let's take a look at our Toyota keys to the game. Here's the records of our two starting pitchers, Johnny Cueto and Kyle Loesch, against the teams they're facing tonight. Their last four starts, Kyle Loesch has the best of Cueto. Yeah, and, and you could, those numbers have, are actually better for Cueto after the fight. But still in this matchup between and numbers wise the victor would be Kyle Loesch and the Cardinals. David Freeze good to have him back. One of a funky little injury on his ring finger that was having trouble holding the hold on to the bat. But apparently that's OK. So they try to jam him and that may be one of the things you think about as a Cincinnati Red if a guy has an issue with a finger get in his kitchen old school that's right and injury or something like that just jam them. I think with a little warmer weather that uh, that finger will. It will be not a problem. But that is a way to exploit a hand injury is to pitch inside. O2 to freeze. Cueto set. And he misses. Game one of a three game series. Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. Off day yesterday. Cardinals won two out of three against the Chicago Cubs. And it's a nice night for baseball here at Bush Stadium. Recording with Al Roboski. And we're glad you're with us. Good start for the Cardinals. Three series against Central Division opponents. And they won all three. Fastball catches the corner. Freeze doesn't like it. Two strikeouts, but the Cardinals' power strikes again. Carlos Beltran with a solo shot in the bottom of the first. One nothing Cardinals. Our first bank, first take. Kyle Loesch trying to turn these numbers around. Cincinnati has hit in all in the last four games, ten or more hits in each one of those games, and Loesch has been a low hit guy so far this year. And we'll see if he can turn around this Reds offense and it's strike one to Scott Rowland. It's like our home plate umpire has a very big strike zone. Very good for the pitcher. You okay with that Al? Oh I, I am now that we have the lead. Big as possible. Make it as big as possible. And then exploit it. Get ahead of a hitter and then do not throw another strike. Get the hitter to expand his zone. We're going to work him away here. Kyle Loesch has really relied on having pinpoint control when he's been good. That's why he's been good. And what do you think so far for him? Well I like that everything is down. You know when he keeps it down that's conducive to ground balls. You know his curveball this year is really much much tighter and that much more effective. It used to be more of sinker slider. Also incorporate the change up and the curveball, but it, I think the curveball is better now than we've seen in, in previous years. First inning was so fast we didn't really see much of right. Kyle Loach. Another fastball in. Good job. Jams rolling. Tough play for Freeze. Off balance throw. 
And he throws out a guy who's made that play about 10,000 times. Really hits a spot right here down and in. You can see right there it's not a fluid swing by Rowan. Third baseman's responsibility. Anything he can get to his left, you take it. And then showed his good arm with the off balance throw. That was a good look on our Chevy Fox tracks. Now facing Jay Bruce. An all star a year ago, a breakout year for Jay Bruce. And a big swing, but he pops it up to left. Holiday looking for it, finds it, and catches it. Very efficient. Kyle Loesch has been and I thought that one ball was a strike. So 15 14 pitches thrown 13 strikes. That's you're working ahead in the count doing what you got to do first pitch strikes. I think everyone but one. And he only threw one ball. Is that too many strikes Al? Is that possible? Well not where he's throwing in location. You know because nothing is in the middle of the plate it's down it's it's in and it's out it's kind of changes speeds. Brian Ludwig does not look good on that slider from Loesch. Brian had a big game in Washington first inning uh, grand slam off of Detweiler. And how about his big year with the Cardinals that came in 2008. Where he hit 299, 37 home runs, 113 RBIs as a Cardinal. Really a career year for him. Two years later, traded to San Diego and then on to Pittsburgh last year. You know, both years he was traded at the deadline and went to a first but a first place club and they just went in the tank. And just coincided that he was he was the one that's traded because you know he's a he's a quality person and player. And Ryan also told me that he and his wife are, will be expecting their second child uh, this offseason. Very nice. He's jammed. Not played by Berkman, but flipped on to Loesch. Ludwig was not expecting that pitch. Cardinals dynamic pricing gives fans access to great deals for games throughout the 2012 season and we've got a dynamic deal for you here tonight all inclusive tickets for Sunday games throughout 2012 start as low as seventy dollars get yours at Cardinals dot com or you can phone three one four three four five nine thousand watch out Yadier Molina is hit by a pitch and the home plate umpire Tony Randazzo comes out to warn Johnny Cueto who doesn't like that but with all of the history between Yadier Molina and Cincinnati I understand what Randazzo is doing. Yeah I understand it I and mean, he's also creating the environment for something to happen it was not intentional but because of the history as you said it's a breaking ball that gets away and an overreaction from the umpiring crew. But you know people ask before this series is there any carryover and really if anything it would be the Cardinals carry over against Cueto and if anything Cueto would try and uh, you know keep that calm and, and you not think so. Yeah you would think he would not try to do anything to it, initiate it so I think it was just the ball got away from it. Here's a line drive up the middle another base hit for John Jay who's hit Cueto very well. Well he was batting 500. He was batting 500 prior to this with three home runs. Including his first home run as a big leaguer. That came on June 1st 2010 off of Cueto. He's got two more since then. And there's the 500 you're talking about that only got better right here. In fact John Jay has hit. The Cincinnati Reds pitchers better than anybody in all of baseball over the last three years. And he was batting 390 coming in against Cincinnati in his career. 
and a cool 500 against Cueto. He's added to both. Slider strike one to Daniel Descalzo. Okendo flashing the signs to Molina at second and John Jay at first. Descalzo essentially has become the Cardinals regular second baseman. Ground ball to Cueto. He's got it on the second for one and he can't get it out of his hands. Well, Cozart just stayed right there at the bag and John Jay did what he was supposed to do. You just go in there, you flip them if they're right there. Just a nice, clean, hard baseball. And it's really the shortstop that hung himself out to drive. See him right there? He couldn't get the exchange. He see him right there, and that allowed John Jay to get on top of him. And the reason you do that as a base runner is because you're trying to disrupt that return throw. One, it keeps you away from the double play. And two, maybe you throw, throw the ball wildly. And in this case, the Cardinals would have picked up a second run. Loesch set to bunt. Back to Cueto. Cueto checks the lead runner and then barely gets Kyle Loesch at first. All of a sudden, he realized maybe I should worry about Molina as well and turned at the last second and almost missed Kyle Loesch on the successful sacrifice. Take a look at the numbers over the last two years, 2011 to 2012. The Cardinals have grounded into just six double plays, Al, through the first 10 games this year. Well, versus 15 when last season they set a National League record in grounding into double plays. But the interesting thing, look at the record. Four and six with three blown saves. That's three more victories. So they would have the same seven and three record if they didn't have all the problems they had in the bullpen last year. Bullpen has been good for the Cardinals. So's the offense. So's the starting pitching. And that's the reason they're seven and three. Rafael for call has four RBIs. He'd like to have six. Check swing. Larry Vanover says he did not swing at that pitch. So one and one to for call. Molina was hit by a pitch to start this inning. Descalzo reached on a fielder's choice following a hit by John Jay. For call very close to the plate. You always get the sense that guys up on the plate are daring you to pitch them in. But that's where they like it. Sometimes they they will do something like that. Stand right up on the plate trying to tell a pitcher hey come in there and a lot of times with today's fastball command they'll leave too many balls out over the middle of the plate and you, those are hittable. Can hardly get much closer. Cueto and Hannigan having some confusion on the signs for the second straight inning and they're going to talk about it. Ricky, both these starters are facing a team in back-to-back -back starts. A lot of times, if you were good in that first start, don't try and change your pitching pattern. If you were successful with it, continue to pitch the same way and, and until they prove that they can hurt you. Don't overthink. That's right. If you got them out with, with the one way, continue to do it. Three and one to for call and I don't think he wants to face Carlos Beltran with the bases loaded. A lot of times a pitcher will think you know well they they saw me last week so I've got to change it up. I've got him out this way. I'll have to do something different and it works to the hitters advantage. Three one has popped up on the left side. Scott Rowland is calling for it. And he retires for call. Cardinal strand two runners here in the second. Jim Hayes will join us for the third. Blues playoffs continue Thursday night. Live coverage of their game with the Sharks starts at 9 p.m. And you'll find the game right here on Fox Sports Midwest. The Blues and the Sharks Thursday night. 
It'll be John Kelly with his playoff beard, Darren Pang and Bernie Federko on the call, and it has been some kind of exciting to watch the Blues play this year. All kinds of Blues fans here at the ballpark tonight as well, and they're enjoying a baseball team that's seven and three. Kyle Loesch out for his third inning of work. Rick Horton, Al Raboski, and Jim Hayes for the third. As Kyle Loesch has had six up and six down. I think John Kelly looks great with his postseason beat. I love listening to those guys too. They're great, great. Nothing like playoff hockey. Good location by Loesch, one and two. And as you've said, Al, he is just an April pitcher. Take away the year where he hurt his forearm and was not effective. He has just been lights out in April. Very, very confident. You know, one. He when he's healthy, you know, he's he's a force to be reckoned with. Last season, he led the, the team in wins and ERA. Tough hop for Freeze. He's got it. Close play, and he's safe at first base. That's the speed of Drew Stubbs. And that'll be an infield hit. And boy, it's nice to run like Drew Stubbs. Well, he has phenomenal talent. He has great speed. He also has power, but he also has 12 strikeouts and 36 at bats. They'd love him to, be, to win that, you know, leadoff spot, but you just can't leave him up there with so many strikeouts. 40 stolen bases a year ago, a threat here with Ryan Hannigan at the plate. And it is nice to have David Freeze back at third base, Jim. Mike Matheny was saying before the game that David let him know in uncertain terms, no uncertain terms, that uh, he was ready to play. Said he got a text from David, so I asked David. What did the text say? Was it anything ominous? And he said, no, it was very passive. I feel good. I think I can play. And he said he learned his lesson from Tony La Russa, who used to say quite clearly, the <laughs> manager makes out the lineup card. So he said he was just letting Mike know he was OK. Should he want to put him in that starting line? Fair enough. Big hole on the right side. Stubbs was going on the last pitch. Not going here. There's a line drive base hit to right. Beltron charges it. Stubbs is going to try for third. Here's a throw from Beltron, and he is out of third base. Carlos Beltron gets his man. Not only does he get the lead runner, but because of a low trajectory of the throw, the hitter Hannigan has to stay at first. I think Dusty has a very valid argument. From the naked eye, it looked like Stubbs got in there, but. Beltron made a great throw. Remember, he's got great speed. It's a line drive out there. One hops Beltron. He's running hard all the way. And you can see the reaction from Barry that there it looks like he's out, doesn't it? Very close play at third. He's kind of stopped. And now he's safe. <laughs> safe twice, out once. I prefer him out all three times. Cardinals with a break there, and that brings in Johnny Cueto. So back to back base hits, but Loesch out of the jam. One nothing Cardinals. Loesch has been very stingy with the hits so far this year. Just six hits in 13 innings coming into this game. There's a bunt back to Loesch. Cueto jogs to first. He's retired. Out number two. Well, Jim, you also have an update on one of our favorite Cardinals. We haven't talked about him yet on the telecast. That's Skip Schumacher. Skip is rehabbing in Memphis. There had been some talk about when the Cardinals would bring him back up, and Mike Matheny says no immediate plans. They don't want to push him. Same with Alan Craig, who's had extended spring, uh, not even quite ready for a rehab assignment, but both guys. Mike very clear they want to give him time they don't want to rush him and they feel like maybe before with other injuries these guys pushed it a little too hard. Uh, maybe Alan Craig especially was making progress and then he had like 10 at bats in minor league uh, multiple games uh, one day and they came up uh, stiff and he's been kind of on hold until recently. If that's the best thing that can happen with a seven and three start you don't feel like you have to rush 
these guys until they're fully ready. And Yadier. And Alan Craig had said, you know, when he reported to spring training, I think I might be ready for opening day. He felt that positive about it, but again, they're going to be cautious. Yadier Molina, Jim, hit by a pitch in the second inning. Brandon Phillips batting in the third inning. Just at, just saying, Al. Nope. Not after the warnings, which is kind of ridiculous to warn people because in an umpire's judgment, if you were intentionally threw at somebody, you can throw them out without a warning. Phillips, a little surprising that he doesn't have an RBI yet. Missed five games with a left hamstring injury. It happened against the Cardinals, and he comes up entry empty on that breaking pitch. There's the curveball. There's the curveball, yeah. Loesch has been a lot tighter. Working more on. And a pretty big swing. 0 2 to Brandon Phillips. Good pitch right there. We didn't get the call, but it's in a perfect location. Either you get the call, 0 2, or it sets up the next pitch. You can either go back inside or you can go away. Because you came inside, you got him very conscious of it. The one two he does double up with the fastball and misses. Two time all star Brandon Phillips. The two two. It's the ball on the left side freeze has it. And he throws out Brandon Phillips. Cardinals get out of the jam. Carlos Beltran has been a hero so far. A home run in the first. And he nails Drew Stubbs at third in the third. And it's 1-0 Cardinals. Beltran to lead it off for St. Louis. Beltron, Holiday, and Berkman in the Cardinals' third. They lead one to nothing, facing Johnny Cueto, and a strike one to Beltron, who's had a nice night so far, which includes his fourth home run of the season. Batting from the left side, soft liner to center field, shallow center field. Stubbs on the move, and he can't get it. So two hits for Carlos Beltron. You can follow the Cardinals with MLB.com at bat 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. All you're going to need to do is text at bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com for details. Matt Holiday doubled in the first, and Jim Hayes, you had a chance to visit with Mike Matheny on Matt Holiday, and he believes he's ready to break out basically said he's there ready to break out he said the last few games you can't tell by the scorebook obviously holidays numbers aren't where he'd like them but he said he's hit the ball harder than anyone in baseball only at someone he calls it buzzards of luck but he said holiday was due for a breakout back in rolling lead runner at first on the first and a force out off the bat of Matt Holliday, and there's Scott Rowland doing his thing. Scott Rowland in his eight gold, gold gloves. You'll see why here. Well off the line, goes to his knees, backhands it from the knees, throws over there, skips Phillips, but he's a gold glover too. You can see how 240 pounds, but Scott Rowland almost has the reflexes of a shortstop. Tremendous agility of Scott Rowland. That's how you get those eight gold gloves right there. Lance Berkman takes ball one from Cueto again the infield shifting to the right. Holiday now the runner at first. Line drive up the middle base hit for Lance Berkman and he hit that ball right on the nose. That's one of those baseballs I would guess Johnny Cueto heard as it went past him. Right, his momentum pulls him to the first base side and otherwise he gets nailed in the back. 
You know that sound, that little kind of buzzing sound? Nobody's ever hit a ball off me. Okay, Al. <laughs> Buying that, Jim? Were you ever drilled? Oh, many times. Many times. I used to like Jay Randolph, but one time they, Dick Allen hit a ball right back through the box, and they replayed it about 50 times trying to figure out how it missed my head. And you don't want to be hit by a, a battered ball from Dick Allen. No. But you do like Jay now. Uh, yes, I right. do. He's the I best. Got over good it. man. David Freeze. Jay will continue to do features for Fox Sports Midwest. He did some for us last year and really a fixture in Cardinal baseball. And we look forward to all our telecasts throughout the year on Fox Sports Midwest. And how lucky are we to have Jim Hayes with us? Well, you need Jay to class up the joint after me. Right, Al? <laughs> He's smiling. I'm on my best post. behavior. Okay. Best behavior. Doing very well, Al. Two runners aboard for St. Louis. Cueto. This is low to David Freeze. 2 0. Freeze struck out looking on a pitch that was off the plate in the first inning. And again, Hannigan and Cueto having to have that conversation behind gloves over the mouth. Players doing that so nobody can, I guess. How come when the pitching read? coach comes out? They never cover their mouth. That's a good question. Al, any idea? I'll have to ask Derek Lilliquist that question. And by the time you read their lips and translate it down to the batter, the bat is over. So good to see Freeze, Berkman. Back in the starting lineup, but how about how this offense has continued to hum along, even with backups? Guys stepping up. 299 as a team, first in the National League. The Reds, on the other hand, next to last in the National League. Matt Carpenter, one of those guys that helped it hum right along. What a day he had. Well, they lead the National League in batting average, run scored, home runs, all kinds of different statistics. And the Reds are batting 174 with runners in scoring position. Cueto misses high and away. That'll load the bases for Yadier Molina. Cincinnati Reds, game one of a three game series here in St. Louis, Bush Stadium. Rick Horton, Al Raboski with Jim Hayes here in the third inning. Game time temperatures in the mid 60s really pleasant evening here a nice crowd on hand and Cardinals are out on top again and they really led most of the series in Cincinnati Cardinals on top here again in this game Yadier Molina hit by a pitch his first at bat which drew some attention from the home plate umpire Tony Randazzo who warned both teams overreaction from the umpires and saw on that pitch Anakin was set up away it was supposed to be a breaking ball and it just spun on him holiday Berkman freeze are your runners Molina we've seen him hit grand slams before Molina has 10 RBIs. Freeze leads the ball club with 11. And Matt Carpenter also has 10 RBIs. Tough lineup to crack when you've got 10 RBIs in the early going. <laughs> right. That 409. The 2 0. You usually so good at putting the ball in play. And yeah, struck out a few times in the early going. You wonder if he's maybe he'll have a few more strikeouts as he's more in an RBI position now. 
Cueto behind in the count to Molina. Swung on and hit foul just past the third base bag. And watch out, Matt Holiday. Always take your lead in foul territory. Because if you're hit by that ball, it's dead ball. Nothing happens. Another thing what you do is when you're walking back, you take your lead straddling the line. In case somebody wants to throw, you're kind of a, a blocking, a blocker or running interference. Popped up on the right side. Votto gives chase and makes the play. Cueto retires Yadier Molina. And that's a big out for him. Cardinals are smelling a big inning here. Still have one or more opportunity with John Jay. We've mentioned he hits Cincinnati well, but particularly hits Johnny Cueto well. It is 10 for 19 now against Cueto with three home runs. He's been doing a little more punishing other pitchers with that 400 average of runners in scoring position. You think the warning to Cueto changes the way either Cueto or Loesch pitches here the rest of the way? It, it shouldn't. You still have to pitch inside. You still have to pitch your ball game. And that's what you know and and when the way they've changed the rule now when you warn people it's not automatic it, sh it used to be automatic that the manager and the pitcher ejected whether it's intentional or not now they it's up to the determination again and that leads to a lot more arguments and bad feelings so if, you get the warning it's got to be in your head a little bit you can't, you you can't think that way you got to pitch your ball game you, if you change if right now it says I need to jam this guy you know you've got to go in and do that because if you don't you're you're pitching to his strength but well, whatever the book on John Jay is the that opposite. Cincinnati has there it's not working burn it book burner the one one on top of the yeah. outstanding offensive output by John Jay. We've seen so many occasions this season where he's cutting off balls in the gap defensively saving an extra base here or there. He's really become a very good outfielder in my opinion. Fundamentally he's very sound. And for a young player hit, hitting well. Oh it, it works on every aspect of the game. See right there he tried to come inside and just off the plate. But if it says you got to pitch inside you got to continue to do it. And even though that clearly was a ball, it's almost too too close to take. But a great hitting count now, three one. Ground ball to second. Phillips flips to Cozart, and the Cardinals do not tack on here in the third inning. They strand three one nothing Redbirds. Over the weekend I went to my schnooks and got some great meats that I barbecued. But I also noticed at the pharmacy that you can sign up for automatic refills. If you take a medication you have to refill regularly. You put it on the auto refill program. Schnooks will refill the prescription for you and have it ready at the pharmacy. So when all you have to do is stop by and pick it up. They'll leave you a phone message to remind you when it's ready. Just ask your pharmacist my case Mike and Larry and sign up online for snooks.com slash pharmacy and by the way my former manager Dave Berkemeyer congratulations Dave and Ann Berkemeyer on the birth of their new granddaughter Madeline outstanding Dave got promoted Cozart, Votto, and Roland for Cincinnati. There's a strike at the knees, a good location for Kyle Loesch. That pitch at 89. Cozart was off to such a good start, but he's 0 for his last 13. Ricky, maybe this is a, a good lesson that Adam Wainwright, right now where he's kind of struggling, pitching with less stuff, can really watch how Kyle Loesch is still doing it at 89. You know, 
I think in time and it may be taken until June that Adam may get back to that 93. But. You know it's kind of the psychological. You know uh, disadvantage where you don't have the velocity that you had earlier. Scott Linebrink to his right. Still on the disabled list be nice to have him back out with his leadership. In the Cardinal bullpen and there's a rarity Kyle Loesch has walked a batter. We'd like to invite you to go to carsoup.com slash Cardinals and provide some email questions for us. It's our email of the booth. Feature that we'll be dealing with later on today. We look forward to seeing your emails and we'll be glad to answer the question here tonight. Strike one to Joey Votto. Pitch in on the hands of Votto. Loesch now ahead in the count, but we've seen Votto become a very good hitter when he is down in the count. He is just an outstanding player. Gold glove a year ago. We mentioned the most valuable player in 2010. A couple of all-star games and he's just 28 and he has a pretty nice hefty contract. How about the option is for 2024. So has a couple years remaining on his existing contract and then he signed a 10 year extension. Looking forward to that year Al. He jams Votto but it's a base hit to left that's what good hitters do. So now two base runners. In the Reds fourth that's how they began the third. But they weren't able to pick up a run. Our Missouri lottery Fox tracks. All set up away and you see the ball come back up the middle. Well, it wasn't a. You know a flat out mistake but a better piece of hitting his ball had movement came back over the middle of the plate but still you would think. You know down in the wheelhouse he had to fight that off a little bit and muscle it to left field. Scott Rowland hitting just 118 in the early going. Rick had also mentioned how. The Reds are hitting 174 with runners in scoring position. Mm. Loesch wants a ground ball here. And that number you just gave out part of the reason why the Reds have only had a lead one time in their three games now four games with the Cardinals this year and that was final the very game. last day swing of the bat Yeah, walk off by Heisey hit off of Salas made them a winner in game three in Cincy. But the Cardinals still won that series two to one. Talked a little bit early in the ball game how it's kind of a big pitcher strike zone. Well it's tightened up a little bit. Especially on the breaking ball. Yeah all you ask for is is consistency. Hitters will adjust if it's a big or tight strike zone but. Whatever it starts out you want it to continue. From the first inning through the ninth inning. Cozart and Votto the runners. Loesch has given up three hits so far. Walked one struck out one. Facing former Cardinal Scott Rowland. Here's that average. 174. With runners. In scoring position. Pirates off to a rough oh, start boy. as well. The 2 2. There's a strike on the inside corner. Roland doesn't like that call. But it's strikeout number two for Kyle Loach. 
way away. Now they got him thinking away and tough pitch too close for two strikes but uh, you can see why Scotty objected to it. Maybe we're back to our big strike zone. Tony heard me. Tony <laughs> Randazzo. That's the kind of pull you have Al. Jay Bruce. Very dangerous batter from the left side. You really think about how dangerous he is in Cincinnati too Al with a ballpark that. Well just can't hold him. Uh, 32 home runs a year ago. We, he got a little pull happy. He said he wants to use more of the field but he's kind of searching for it right now with that 200 average. Change up way out in front is Jay Bruce 0 and 2. Young hitters especially power hitters very susceptible to that change up. Pulls off it head goes flying. The 0 2 to Bruce. Waste pitch high. That just for effect so we can follow up with what Al. Well he has so many different weapons but ain't right now he could throw any of them. Change up breaking ball. Wants this probably a breaking ball. Molina's asking for it down. Fastball paints the inside corner and Jay Bruce is caught looking. So the zone continues to expand per Al's request back to back strikeouts for Loesch. 90 miles an hour but it almost looked like a change up didn't it. And Yachty was calling for it you know, like bouncing that might have been a, a decoy with the runner out at second base thinking that he may re, be relaying signs to the hitter. Ryan Ludwig the last chance for Cincinnati here in the fourth inning. He has not looked good on the off speed pitches at all in the early going. Ludwig one of those guys that we saw him for a number of years very streaky hitter when he's hot he hits everything. He can, he can carry a ball club. There was a slider off the plate. He's swinging at the fastball. Always considering to be a low ball hitter. And obviously he likes the fastball. Even that reaction to the off speed pitch just very uncomfortable a little off balance. First time up he hit the ball to first base a little soft liner and then. You know, Berkman dropped it. Loesch was covering but it was slider slider on the first two pitches. It had the same count one and one. Another, another slider and he lays off it. Lead off walk out to Zach Cozart started this inning then a base hit. By Joey Votto jam shot to left and back to back strikeouts of Roland and Jay Bruce. Los trying to get through this inning as he did in the third. Off speed pitch way out in front. Was Ryan Ludwig. Mm. I mean you can see the you know the sliders the change ups. But right now after you've seen so many pitches down it'd be a perfect time to change the eye angle and run something up and away you just it's a, you want to almost make it a ball and you run it full they're going to come back in back away slider strikes out Ryan Ludwig three strikeouts in a row for Kyle Loesch he gets rolling and Bruce. And now Ryan Ludwig to strand two more Reds. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by MyKiaStLouis.com. There's no curfew for late night cravings, so stop by Jack in the Box, where the entire menu is available all day long. And by the new wireless receiver from AT&T Uverse. Visit att.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. And there's no curfew for Alvira Krause. Because she's 92 years young. Longtime Cardinal fan from it looks like Story City, Iowa. Recovering from an injured shoulder. She must have been a pitcher. <laughs> 
Pop up on the left side. New life for Descalzo. We just showed you a nice shot of the UMB Bank Champions Club and one of the World Series trophies that's on display there. The four most recent World Series championships all resulted in one of those trophies and was celebrated here on opening day. I didn't realize it, you know, because you say the Cardinals have won 11 World Championships, right. but they only have four trophies. The other ones count. It, well, it was around the 60s when they started giving the trophies. So prior to that, you know, the Cardinals. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, Jerry McNeil has probably the largest collection of. World Series. Uh, you know, at one point there were belt buckles, there were tie tacks, there were all kinds of different things that they gave instead of rings. But then he has been able to photograph almost every ring in, you know, throughout the uh, history of Major League Baseball. I'm going with the trophy over the tie tack. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, are, we the, are the rings are awful the special. The rings are nice too. And the, the ownership gets the trophy. But then you, all the players can get a replica. And by the way, if you have not seen the World Series ring up close and personal, it is stunning. Descalzo strikes out, out number one, brings in Kyle Loesch. Major League on Fox season. Fox Sports is proud to support Boys and Girls Club of America, a place where youth can reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. To learn more, visit greatfutures.org slash Fox Sports. Decent hack for Kyle Loesch, fouls it back. Successful sacrifice, his first plate appearance, and he's become pretty decent with the bat. Well, it all started with Tony Larusa. He gave his pitchers more heating time. Fly ball to right, out number two. I'd like to invite you to participate in the Cardinals Care 6K and One Mile Fun Run. It'll be Sunday, September 16th. Visit cardinals.com slash 6K for more information. And I'm still trying to get you to run in that with me, Al. Uh, Ricky? Not going to happen? How many doctor's notes do you want to see? <laughs> We should congratulate our partner Dan McLaughlin who ran the goal mar half marathon. That's what I heard. But I'm not going to get you to do this one mile. Not trying to make you feel guilty or anything, Al. You can't. Rafael Furcal is over two. He's popped up twice. Cueto's had some trouble. He had trouble in the second, trouble in the third. The Cardinals have managed just one run, so they've they've let some opportunities slip so far tonight. Yeah, they have missed some opportunities. They've stranded six runners. But part of the equation, the Cardinals will try and run that pitch count up. And it's not that bad. It's 67 pitching here in the fourth inning, but remember the start that he had in in Cincinnati he was leading three to nothing and then Komatsu had a 14 he had one out then he got, he got Komatsu to finally pop up to sh short but he ended up having a 14 pitch bat and then you know the next three batters uh, uh, scored three runs. That's going to be a base hit if it stays fair. And it did. Swinging bunt for Rafael for call. Puts him aboard for Carlos Beltran who's two for two. Pitchers hate this. Just a swinging <laughs> bunt. Just perfectly placed. You're hoping to roll foul, but it starts spinning back towards the infield, and Ralphie's on base. We well, sure like to see him run when, like he did when he was early in his career. Over 300 steals is 
Beltran has over 300 home runs. Makes me think of the game Lenny Randall I believe was the yes. infielder who actually went down on his knees and blow blew the ball foul. <laughs> Which and I think is illegal. It is illegal. Hard to imagine that's actually in the rule book but <laughs> but you can't do that. Cueto throws 90 to 93 with his fastball good change up. Beltron also has had a good career against Cueto. Not quite John Jay numbers but not bad. Beltron 1999 rookie of the year with Kansas City six time all star three time gold glove winner and he now has 306 home runs teammate Lance Berkman has 358 they're among just nine switch hitters all time with 300 plus home runs. Quick move by Cueto and for call looked as if he might be headed towards second base. Kind of was leaning hanging in the air there a bit and Cueto does have those quick feet and snap throw you got to be careful. For call two for two and still in bases the Cardinals have been successful six out of eight times this year. And it's something that Mike Matheny would like to have more stolen base you know, they only had 57 a year ago and we saw in spring training he tried to encourage players that if you get that good lead you don't go off use good judgment something else you can do with the veteran play of uh, veteran players the Reds have only stolen two bases at a team as a team Cardinal six of the throw over <laughs> Game two of the series will be Jaime Garcia and Matt Latos. And the finale Thursday, Adam Wainwright and Bronson Arroyo. Latos is, they put an awful lot of weight on his shoulder. Two out walk to Beltron, and the pitch count continues to climb for Cueto. And now he has to contend with Matt Holliday. Second walk plus a hit batter. But we already talked about they've already stranded six. A couple more out there so you want to have one of those timely hits. Outfield very deep for Holiday, particularly in right field. He has power everywhere. Washington Nationals have beaten the Astros today one to nothing the Nationals the Dodgers and the Cardinals are the division leaders as of April 17th Dodgers off to a good start and they're playing Milwaukee they can help the Redbirds these, these Reds had a weekend series with the Nationals and they said either their pitching is awfully good or our hitting is awfully bad and probably a little combination combination of both Chris Spire bench coach looks on and Cueto and Hannigan talk some more probably five times I would say so a lot of meetings on the mound with Hannigan and Cueto who seem to not be on the same page Cueto still managing to give up just one Cardinal run but a dangerous at bat here and he's behind in the count to holiday the 2-0 Big swing, just a little bit late. Glad you're with us from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. First game of a three game series here tonight. Kyle Loesch and Johnny Cueto are your pitchers.
Oh, two outs, two strikes. McCall can get that big lead. He can almost be an umpire out there. He sees Holiday swing, take off. That's what he's doing, line drive, but it's handled by Ryan Ludwig, the good hands of Luddy. Buzzard's luck. Tune in before every game again this year for Toyota Cardinals Live. Tomorrow night, we're going to have the return of the cat fight with Jim Hayes. We're going to have a lot of twist prizes and fun with former Redbirds all season long. Cardinals Live tomorrow at 6.30, followed by the Reds and the Cardinals at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports Midwest. Top of the fifth, one nothing St. Louis. Kyle Loesch working against Johnny Cueto. And Loesch has allowed just three hits through the first four innings. He's walked one and struck out four. There's the numbers for Loesch. His pitch count at 56. And he will face the bottom of the order. And he begins with the speedy Drew Stubbs. Fly ball to center field. Looks like it'll be one pitch. One out. Quayle is at 79. Loesch is at what, 56? And good to retire the speedy Stubbs. Stubbs singled in the third inning. A little harmless ground ball on the left side. Very, very fast runner. Good to keep him off the base. He would be a leadoff hitter, except for what you said earlier on all the strikeouts. They wanted him to be the leadoff hitter. Yes. And they wanted, you know, Phillips to be more down the lineup a little bit. He could drive in some runs. Or Kyle Loesch, this is his third start of the year, and one consistent pattern has been getting ahead of every hitter. Can't be much better than 16 of 17 first pitch strikes. 70% is good. And he's a whole lot better than that. He retires Hannigan. You just see how much confidence he has. It's just fun to watch when he's out there. And he's doing a very good job in a game like this where your teammates have stranded have stranded you know eight runners you just have to separate yourself from the offense you pitch your ball game don't worry about what your teammates are doing offensively working fairly quickly pumping in those strikes pitching coaches love those first pitch strikes Derek Lilliquist is First full year as the pitching coach here in St. Louis with our first year manager, Mike Matheny. And Loesch has been able to throw any of his pitches for strikes. So it's not like, you know, a hitter can go up there and just guess fastball. But a lot of where a lot of these pitchers have been, even if they do and they get the pitch, they're still having trouble centering it. Thinking about our first year pitching coach and our first year manager, I think folks would make the mistake of thinking that these are guys are timid and unsure about themselves. Both of these guys, very strong minded, and I imagine there's going to be times where they'll butt heads about decisions, but they're not they're not afraid to be tough. Both of them do it in kind of quiet ways, but but they're very sure about the game of baseball. And very confident. I talked to Mike about, you know, and all right. There hadn't been one thing that's kind of fooled you and he goes no nothing's fooled me he said a couple times I didn't uh, maybe didn't react quick enough to something that you know it, it, it wouldn't show up none of us would know it but you know he saw something and it just was maybe it was a little slowed on the on the draw but I mean it was way ahead of what we were thinking. Some ways this game can move slowly, but for a manager, you have to make those decisions quickly. And many times you're making decisions two or three innings ahead. Right. Planning out things, and he knows the pitch count of low. She knows who's available in the bullpen. He knows who's on his bench, and he knows that Loesch just picked up another strikeout. That's six on the night for Kyle Loesch.
Johnny Cueto back to work for the bottom of the fifth inning. He's been the only starter so far this year that's picked up a victory for Cincinnati Al. And that was uh, opening day. You know he pitched seven shutout innings got the victory. So if you take his second and third starts including tonight and all the other starters they're over for their last ten. The only two wins they have out of their bullpen have both been by Chapman. And one of those was at the Cardinals expense. You wonder about the future of Aroldis Chapman who pitched very well against St. Louis in Cincinnati. He's just such a dramatically improved pitcher in terms of his command. Still throwing in the high 90s. Well, they, you know, they said he was just enamored with the triple digits. Now he's only pitching. He's dropped down comfortably to like 97, 98, and he has so much better command now. Poor guy. Yeah. Cruise control at 97. Strike one to Lance Berkman. Struck out and single. Uh, Berkman showing bunt is they have the shift on and all he's trying to do is just push it towards third base. See how far back Scott Rowland is how far off the line. That's one way to break that uh, that shift. And some indication that he feels pretty good about his calf through the first four innings of play. Injured that calf running out of triple in Cincinnati. Set out the, the entire weekend series against the Cubs. He and David Freeze both sat out Sunday but they felt good enough that they could pinch hit. And then with the off day on Monday they both you know, Mike Matheny knew that they were available and could put him back in the lineup. And speaking of triples Cardinals have done that five straight games, five straight games hit a triple. Matt Carpenter has a couple of those. The one two to Berkman. Way high. Berkman Freeze and Molina in the Cardinal fifth. Swing and a miss. Berkman. Strikeout number four for Cueto. Cardinals Magazine is a true keepsake for baseball's best fans. Start your subscription today by calling 314-345-9303 or you can go to cardinals.com and that is some magazine. Cardinals Magazine. They have a wonderful section in the latest edition. It's freeze hits this ball foul that Talks about the Cardinal stars of the future and outlining all of the expectations for Colton Wong and Zach Cox and Oscar Tavares and Shelby Miller and really is an outstanding magazine. Their pictures are always top notch. Wong, if I'm not mistaken, is batting over 400 in double A. Deep but foul. Oscar Tavares, who flirted with 400 at Quad Cities last season, was three for five with a triple and RBI for Springfield. Matt Adams, who was the big, big uh, you know, winner of you know, who's the star potential in spring training, was three for four, and has raised his average to 413. Now six in the Pacific Coast League. That's the big power. Uh, first baseman who led the Texas League in home runs and RBIs, player of the year. A look at John Mosellock, the Cardinal general manager. He has to be pleased with the prospects that the Cardinals are piling up in the minor leagues. Late swing by Freeze, an awkward swing, and another strikeout for Cueto. Well, he doesn't seem to be getting tired yet. That pitch at 93, pitch count at 88. Two bats at bat, so he'd be out of the game after this inning or that at bat. How about uh, uh, Justin Verlander last night? Went 131 pitches in his complete game. And the final 
131st pitch was 100 miles an hour. He threw. <laughs> he threw. The last batter. It was four pitches, three fastballs at a, all at 100, and an 88 mile an hour slider. Ground ball to short. Cozart. Very easy one, two, three inning for Cueto. We're through five. Cardinals lead by one. Kyle Loesch is completing his warm up tosses. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. They've out hit Cincinnati six to three. We have an errorless game and it's the top of the order for Cincinnati here in the sixth inning. Phillips Cozart and Votto. How about Kyle Loesch has retired six straight Reds and of the six five of them by strikeout. Phillips always a dangerous hitter. A lot more power than you'd think. Hampered lately by a left hamstring issue. See, so he's not playing at 100% here tonight, but he's back in the lineup after missing five straight games. Well, he's won the gold glove three of the last four years, and including last season, and he was picked up a silver slugger award. Just signed a six year contract through 2017. Ground ball up the middle. For Call will have plenty of time to throw out Brandon Phillips. On the field before tonight's game, the mission continues, was recognized for their work with post 9 11 veterans. Several veterans who are Current fellows in the program were on field to receive the recognition. We thank those veterans for their service. Fox Sports Midwest has been blessed to work with them here in St. Louis. Mission continues. We got three projects this summer with uh, Mission Continues. The first one will be on April 28th in Columbia, Missouri. And I know that's an important effort. To you, Al Roboski. I'll be there. And I'll be there that day for a project. Get a lot of the veterans back involved in their community, doing some civic, uh, civic progress. Cozart bounces out. What's on tap is brought to you by Budweiser again this year. Matt Latos, 0 and 1 against Jaime Garcia, 1 and 0. Coverage begins at 6:30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Mentioned that Latos, they gave up a lot of prospects to get that young right-hander, and you know he has so much promise. It just really didn't really materialize that much in San Diego, and just from going from that cozy ballpark, I mean that big, big pitcher's ballpark. To a cozy ballpark in Cincinnati, you just kind of wonder how that's going to translate. A lot of people question his attitude. Different world pitching there. Berkman to Loesch. Three ground balls, harmless ground balls in the sixth. Walt Jockety looking for some offense. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Taco Bell. Live Moss. Find a helpful servicing steel dealer near you. Visit steeldealers.com. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. One nothing St. Louis, bottom of the sixth inning. Bottom of the order for St. Louis. John Jay leads it off. He's one for two against Johnny Cueto.
Cueto had a very good inning in the fifth, a couple of strikeouts, and he got Yadier Molina to bounce out. Pitch count over 90. Could be it for him. Probably his last inning to work, the way clubs are so protective of their young pitchers. So Al we talked about Mike Matheny not having a lot of games where he's had to make a lot of decisions. We have a one nothing game in the bottom of the sixth inning and you talked about him having to think ahead. What's what's going on in his mind right now as he stands near Mike Aldretti as bench coach. Line drive to right and handled by Bruce well, Jay first, hit that ball on the nose. First of all he wanted that ball to get down. <laughs> That's anyway, what he's thinking. He'd like his offense to score a bunch of runs, give him a little cushion. Not only so low should have a little bit of a breather, but if you go into that bullpen, which more than likely you will tonight, you know, that not every pitch can either, you know, tie a ball game or or lose the ball game. Pitchers like to be out there in the mind no matter what score is you're always kind of thinking of a, a one nothing shutout in your favor. But they all would love to have a little insurance run so if you make a mistake it doesn't cost you a game. You really got your best defensive team out there so Matheny probably not thinking about. Any late inning defensive changes right you know I mean. And it appears, you know, that uh, the wounded warriors that are back in the lineup, they're all healthy enough that right. uh, you wouldn't have to replace them defensively. They're not limited at this no. point. One and two to Descalzo, who's 0 for 2. There's another line drive. This one's a base hit. One out single for Descalzo. The Krispy Kreme deal. If you are St. Louis Cardinals, get nine hits today, and we are getting close. You're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow to receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts. Oh, they're the best. Just $3.99. Stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kremes for this sensational deal. Two more to go. Let's go. Come on, Al. Low swinging away. Anticipating a bunt and I'm sure a couple of feelers when they saw that bat go back and pull the trigger they started <laughs> ducking. So there's a decision for the manager that he had to make right. And every now and then just by doing that the next time you aren't sure defensively you may be not going to charge as aggressively. I'd have to think that uh, Krispy Kreme is. They want to rethink that promotion or they just love giving away donuts. For I think they do that price. Yeah. I think that's the kind of folks they are because the Cardinals have have the offense that. They've been in double figures in so many games already this year. Medium depth in the outfield. For for call room on the right side. Phillips limited on the right side ground ball to the left side. Cozart gets the lead runner just barely gets to Scalzo at second base. Roland will lead it off as we're on to the seventh. Time for our AT&T trivia question. Live, name the only living person to manage a game prior to 1960. I don't know, but with, I bet Al does. With the Cardinals. And it's Solly Hemus. Solly was a little infielder in his playing day. And in his post-playing days, a very, very successful businessman in Houston. A lot of real estate and a very was on a cruise with him one time. Al knows everybody. And he was and this is his birthday. Base hit for Scott Rowland leading off the seventh. Mm -hmm. 
And will the wheels start turning for Mike Matheny now? Base runner aboard in the seventh. Kyle Loesch has been cruising. He had retired nine straight Reds before that hit by Roland. I'm not sure I'm saying this correctly, but Lowe sure seems to be throwing a hard 88 today. Ball has life to it. Got Good location. Movement and he's really hit his spots. Elena, nice play going to his right. So glad you're with us here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. Dowd hit Cincinnati seven to four on a beautiful night. Rick Court now Roboski and Jim Hayes with you for game one of the three game series. It's the rival Cincinnati Reds. Short lead by Roland. And that pitch got away from Loesch two and one. Eighty one pitches on the night for Loesch but Mike Matheny is getting his bullpen active. Salas is throwing down there in case he needs some help. Very short lead for Roland. Fly ball to right center. John Jay calls for it, makes the play, and you like the way he takes charge in that outfield. Out number one. I'm sure it's a pet peeve of a lot of managers how a lot of center fielders do not take charge. You know, and pass the buck to a corner outfielder when they should be going out there running. Running down and tracking down everything they can get to. I don't think you'd put John Jay in the category of Gold Glove outfielder at this point, but you'd say he sure is a good outfielder. Yeah, fair, uh, fundamentally very sound, gets good jumps on the ball. I think Matt Holliday is a much improved outfielder. Since he's come to the Cardinals, and we know Beltron, you know, was a, a great center fielder with three gold gloves. He's already had shown his arm and its presence in this in this game. Got an out of runner at third. It's a big play in this game. Drew Stubbs was the runner. That yeah, was lead off. Uh, Two base hits. Stubbs tried to go from first to third, made the first out at, at third base. That's a cardinal no no. Everybody straight away for Ryan Ludwig. The 1 0. He's on the corner, 1 and 1. Ludwig bounced out to Loesch and struck out in the fourth. Playing left field here tonight for Cincinnati. I don't know if it's a reflection of how Ludwig has hit since he left St. Louis, but my impression would be I'd, I'd maybe hit, pull him as a pull hitter a little bit more. You know, when he was with the Cardinals, but it's a lot of line drives, uh, you know, straight away, and but I've seen like a lot of them to left and left center. Has not seen com seem comfortable at all in the at bats we've seen so far in 2012. We looked really uncomfortable in Cincinnati, I thought. He's had trouble with the breaking pitch. He's going to get a fastball here. Jammed him, but he hit it to deep center field. John Jay settles under it. Rolling tags, but cannot advance. You mentioned he's a good fundamental player, Al. Yeah, Kyle Loesch hit his spot, but here you see John Jay back up on the ball so he can get his momentum coming forward. Always anticipate that guy's going to tag up and try and run on you. Don't be standing flat-footed. You know, move back in and and go ahead and execute the throw. See, a lot of guys think, well, they're not going to run on you, and then they're standing flat-footed when the guy takes off.
Another pitch on the corner. This one to Drew Stubbs. Kyle Loesch one out away from putting up seven zeros here tonight. Well, he's changed speeds well and he's hit his spots in and out. And he's made the 714 Fellowship of Christian Athletes high school students who are here tonight for FCA Day happy. They had a chance to hear from some Cardinal players before the game at FCA night at the ballpark. Adam Wainwright spoke this afternoon. As did Kyle McClellan. And Wainwright will get a chance to speak to the Cincinnati Reds in the series finale yeah, Thursday, on Thursday. Thursday afternoon, and we'll see what he comes up with, you know, to kind of counteract a little less velocity. It's amazing how many pitchers today have had the Tommy John surgery. Come back, but maybe it was totally unrealistic for us to think that he was come back as good right away. Check swing. Molina thinks he went. No, says the first base umpire Todd Titchener. I would rather have him throw to first base. As Rowan was well off the bag trying to get back. 205 strikeouts a year ago for Drew Stubbs. You know what Reggie Jackson's biggest contribution to baseball was? He glorified the strikeout. 12 so far this year for Stubbs and a ground ball handled on the backhand by Freeze. Close play and he got him. How about that play? David Freeze helping out Kyle Loesch. Carlos Beltran after we stretch. One nothing St. Louis. 170 for the Cardinals. 0-4-0 for Cincinnati. And this is how the top of the seventh ended with David Freeze on the backhand. And remember how Drew Stubbs can really fly down the line. So he had to get not only does he make a nice play, but get up from his knees and then gun out a speedy runner. And just got him at the wire at first base. Good look on our Hyundai Foxmo. Carlos Beltran. McCure, right hander working out in the Reds bullpen. Mitchell Boggs throwing in the Cardinal pin. Dangerous part of the Cardinal lineup for Cueto. And he's over 100 pitches now. So they probably. I'm hoping for a one two three inning maybe any trouble they go to the bullpen. Out number one in the seventh our Nissan the drive of the game is the Cardinal right fielder Carlos Beltran. Back in the first inning Carlos. Hits the home run. His fourth of the year. Also, his first home run in RBIs, batting left handed. Matt Holliday is one for three, doubled, lined out his last trip, in on the hands a bit as he flies this one to center field. And he is retired on one pitch. So, two quick outs for Johnny Cueto. Now they're kind of doing him a favor right here as he started this inning. Over 100 pitches, and he's gotten two outs pretty effectively and efficiently. Lance Berkman, in his career against Johnny Cueto, has walked 11 times in just 36 at bats, but he's also struck out nine times. So he has taken him into a lot of deep counts 
in their history. And he takes strike one with a slider. Two strikeouts tonight. In his one for three. That's one thing about Lance. He'll make him work a little bit. Try and get that pitch count up. And, and if he gets that right, right pitch to drive, he knows how to do that too. By today's standards, Cueto's going on fumes. A few decades ago, it used to be 120, 130 pitches was normal for a starting pitcher. Two and two to Berkman. So now what is going on in the brain of the Cardinal manager Mike Matheny? What is he prepping for as this game is inching towards the final two innings? Well you have to believe that either he's giving Boggs ample time to warm up or maybe he's made the decision that if I send Loesch out there if he gets one runner on him. I'm, you know he's pitched too well tonight that I, I'm going to let him lose this game. So either Boggs is going to start the inning or Loesch would start the inning and then if he got a man on they take him out. Fly ball to left. Three up three down for the Cardinals. Will Loesch come back out. Nope or not. Done. Welcome back to Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. Let's go to Pat Paris with our Bomberito sports update. Pat. All right, Rick. Thank you very much. Padres at the Rockies tonight. 49 year old Jamie Moyer looking to become the oldest pitcher to win a Major League Baseball game in the fourth. He gets Nick Hundley to hit into an inning ending double play. And in the fifth, he gets the same result against Jason Bartlett. 70 pitches through six shutout innings for Moyer. Three to nothing. Rockies in the bottom of the sixth. Rick Al, back to you. Thanks Pat look forward to the post game show and thanks for that update on Jamie Moyer 49 years old Al be the oldest how much fun is oldest that pitcher to uh, win a ball game mm. major level uh, mid America Chevy dealers call to the bullpen Mitchell Boggs who has been outstanding he's retired nine consecutive batters in his last three innings of work that all started on April the 10th at Cincinnati where he was dominant in two innings of work and then a couple of Appearances against the Cubs. And he'll face Ryan Hannigan, a pinch hitter, Chris Heise, who had the game winner in game three of the series that the Cardinals played in Cincinnati. And look at that, no walks to go with the seven strikeouts. But he liked Mitchell Boggs' stuff, but at times he couldn't repeat his delivery. And, you know, control was a factor. But he has shown. Uh, not only is he throwing strikes right now but he's got a renewed attitude where he is very confident in his ability and Mike Matheny and Derek Wilberquist have that same confidence in him. Think about how much that must mean to Mitchell Boggs. Well, he, I think he was scarred by last season when you know he after Franklin had failed as a closer he got the first shot. Ground ball to the right side and through the wickets. You don't see that very often from Daniel Descalzo. He's very sure footed defender and sure handed. That ball just ate him up. It's his second error of the season, and we're going to have a pinch runner for Heise. Excuse me, Hannigan, the catcher. Mesoraco. Isaac was in the on deck circle, but he is now being Valdez pulled back for Wilson Valdez because the Reds different situation here with a runner aboard, perhaps bunting here in the eighth inning. We'll see how Dusty Baker plays it. I don't often see a, a catcher pinch run for a catcher. And here's where you see Daniel Scalzo 
tried to get over there and had plenty of time and just didn't get that glove down. You get the glove on the ground, it's easier to come up. But back to Boggs, and he tries to rush it, and he's not going to get anybody. Mm -mm -mm. Mitchell Boggs makes the second error of the inning. There's the bunt attempt. The sacrifice is going to work, but the Reds get a little bit more than that. Sinker fastball right here. Just tried to look up before he looked it into his glove. Got out, and the Cardinals right now are self-destructing. Not good when you got uh, a one run late. Cardinals defense had been very good up until this eighth inning. So a successful sacrifice for Valdez, but an error on the pitcher, Mitchell Boggs. Phillips has not hit Mitchell Boggs very well, so bunting here, and he takes that pitch outside 1 and 0. So some tense moments for Mitchell Boggs, the Cardinals defense and the Cardinals manager. Trying to protect a 1 nothing lead here in the eighth inning against the Cincinnati Reds. Showing bunt, Phillips showing bunt. Might get a good pitch to hit, but not sure that that would be the case all through the at bat. 2 and 0. One thing that may be a factor here is Brandon Phillips is not running well because of his hamstring. Dusty Baker perhaps concerned about the double play, which you normally would not be concerned about with Brandon Phillips. He does run well. And the runner at second base is Mazzarocco, the young catcher. And three and zero. Cincinnati's had trouble scoring runs this year. The Cardinals trying to give them some help here in the eighth inning. There's a strike at the knees. Three and one to Brandon Phillips. A couple of errors. Descalzo and the pitcher Boggs. Cardinals with some work to do here. I'll make him earn it from this point. Fall behind, but don't ease up. Bun attempt, foul at the plate. So Boggs trying to come all the way back against Brandon Phillips. Can't imagine that he'd be bunning three and two. What will Dusty Baker do with his all star second baseman Brandon Phillips. Boggs is set. The pitch. There's a line drive right at the second baseman and they're going to get two. Valdez caught off a of first base. That could hardly have gone any better. And the Scalso made up for his error a little bit. As you get two outs, but you still have the tie and run in scoring position out of second. But if you're Mitchell Boggs, you feel awfully good after this hard hit ball. Line drive. How about Berkman? He was reacting, watching backpedal right here. There's separation, so the Scalzo throws it, and then Berkman just kind of senses where that bag is, and they double him off. Double play the hard way. You got the rookie, Cozart. And you got bottom on deck. I'll take Cozart. Oh, for his last 14. Line drive to left in the corner. And this ball is foul. Foul. 
Hey, loud strike. Way to go. With your head in the count. That's what's going on in the mind of Mitchell Boggs. You just wonder if he can get there as quickly as you just did, Al. Well, you just sit there and you go, hey, hey, I got, I'm, I'm first pitch strike. Dusty Baker and the Reds are going, oh, my gosh, that's how our season's gone. Just make sure. You either get that ball a little further in that he pulls it even more. Or has changed speeds away. There's a line drive base hit to right. Beltron bobbles it in right. The run will score. And the Reds have tied it here in the eighth inning, and Kyle Loesch will not go to 3 0. Mike Matheny will go to the left hander now with Votto and try and keep it. Beltron. Boy, you could just see that there's going to be a play at the plate, but it took a funny hop out there in the grass and just kind of bounced away from him a little bit and he misconnected. If he would have caught that ball cleanly with Mesoraco running right there, there would have been a good chance the Cardinals and Beltron could have thrown out a second runner. 35,562 are awaiting Mark Zipchinski. Welcome back to Bush Stadium. Today's carsoup.com email the booth question comes from Jeff in South City, and he wants to know. He's asking you, Al, what do you remember about facing the Big Red Machine? Oh, they didn't stop hitting until they turned out the lights. You know, there was just a an awesome offense. You know, Pete Rose, the all-time hit leader. It, you really didn't worry so much about him because if he got a hit, it was usually going to be a single. George Foster had holes in his swing, even when he had 50 plus home runs back in 77, was nationally, you know, uh, MVP. And me being a left handed pitcher and Joe Morgan being a left handed hitter, remember those were back in the days where he won back to back MVPs. He just wouldn't swing at a pitch out of the strike zone. So if if anyone, he would probably the toughest for me because I like to get ahead and then not throw another strike. Johnny Bench, you respect it. He a great power hitter, but you know he's a Hall of Famer because of his defense and his his home run hitting. But you know he wasn't the you know the best average hitter. Griffey Jr., you know Dreesen, you know you just go on. Geronimo was you know kind of a weaker hitter but they they had a lot of thunder and there was a reason why they were out slugged most opponents and they had a very good bullpen and a lot of guys that would be down there that would always be 70 80 appearances every year. Joey Votto would fit in just perfectly with the big red machine he's the batter at the plate dealing with that slider from Mark Zepchinski one and two and the biggest thing is I can't say anybody how good one of those hitters are because what if I had to face him in an old timers game they'd have an unfair <laughs> advantage against me so yeah. be careful. Zepchinski last season held left handed batters to a 163 average. Tough assignment here in Votto. And a strike at the knees he strikes out Votto looking. Zepchinski does his job, but the Reds have tied it. Pitching has been the story in game one. Cardinals and the Cincinnati Reds. Kyle Loesch outstanding. Seven shutout innings. Johnny Cueto almost as good. Carlos Beltran a home run. The Reds tying it in the eighth inning thanks to a couple of errors. The Cardinals set to hit here in the bottom of the eighth with David Freeze, Yadier Molina, and John Jay. And they'll face the Reds reliever, Logan Andrusik. Six games, doesn't have an ERA yet. And we've seen him good, and we've seen him not so good. Yeah, he made his major league debut against the Cardinals last season. He leads the staff with those six appearances. He had a 3.23 ERA in 66 appearances last year. Long one to left. It's deep, and it's caught. 
Ryan Ludwig runs down that ball hit by David Freeze. Just didn't quite get under it enough. Mm -mm. A little cooler night, just didn't carry, but sure looked good coming off the bat. As say so going the opposite field, he kind of pulls this to left center. And we saw Ryan Ludwig is a very good outfielder, and he just went after that one and just reached up the last second and brought it down. He did go a long way to get that. Yes, ball. he did. Of course, earlier in his career, he was a center fielder. Luddy. Molina bats with one out. Big swing by Molina. Cardinals are not getting cheated here in the bottom of the eighth. Molina taking his time. Wonder if he might have strained something in his wrist, shaking his wrist a bit. The 1 1 pitch to Yachty. Check swing. That won't help. Perfect night for baseball. Bush Stadium in St. Louis. 1 1 is our score. Kyle Loesch and Johnny Cueto are starting pitchers here tonight. Both of them very, very good. Both An unearned them. run by the Reds in the eighth inning, and that's your score, one to one. Yeah, both very good, but Loesch even better. And back to back errors. Cost the, the Cardinals maybe what could have been a one nothing victory. Ground ball to the right side. Bobbled by Phillips, but he does not panic, and he throws out Yachty. A kids join Matt Holiday in the Cardinals Kids Club presented by Rawlings for just $25. Kids get Cardinal tickets, exclusive promotional items, and more to sign up. All the young Cardinal fan needs to do is to go to cardinals.com slash kids club, or you can do it for them. Cardinals Kids Club. Ongoing tradition here with the St. Louis Cardinals. So many traditions. Attached to this team opening weekend was outstanding. The Cubs in town the Cardinals took two out of three games there. We saw opening day the ring ceremony the pennant day had some rain out but it didn't seem to dampen anybody's spirits. Not at all just spectacular no one does opening day ceremonies better than the Cardinals and just thinking about Bobby Valentine how long will he last in Boston. This team is down tonight. 18 to 3. Mm. A little controversy in their clubhouse. They are betting in the ninth, so it's still got a chance to come back. I've seen Texas lose games late, but I don't think they're going to lose this one. One and two to John Jay. John Jay with occasional power. Cardinals have gotten home runs from unlikely sources. Shane Robinson, Matt Carpenter both hit their first career home runs. John Jay has two, but he just lost a bat there. Three up, three down for the Cardinals. On to the ninth. Tied at one as we go to the ninth in St. Louis. Coming up after the game on the post game edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live, Pat Paris and Cal Eldred are at Lumiere Place. Kyle Loesch brings the heat. They'll break it down. Jamie Moyer making history in Colorado tonight. Plus, we'll have Mike Matheny's post game thoughts as well. That and more. Look at uh, Scrabble as he stays on to pitch the ninth. And we go back to the booth and Rick and Al, guys. Thanks, Cat. Good work. Appreciate you being with us. 
during the third inning again tonight and all your work in the pre and the post game and hope folks can stay around for the post game a lot to break down in this one and there's a lot more decisions to come one one top of the ninth inning Zepchinski getting some extended work he struck out Joey Votto to end the eighth inning and he has Roland Bruce and Ludwig in the ninth oh, you might only face two batters here Scott Rowland and then the left hand hitting Bruce and then bring Salas in to face Ludwig. Scott Rowland one of only three major leaguers third baseman in to produce at least 2000 hits 500 doubles 300 home runs and 1200 RBIs. And the Reds are two wins away from 10,000 wins in their history. Ground ball handled by Zipchinski. And he lollipops it over the head of Lance Berkman. Might want to work on that throw. <laughs> we we did PFP for six straight weeks every day every day and you give me that throw. I think Jose is going to take Mr. Zipchinski to the woodshed later but don't do it now he's got another out to get. <laughs> Look There's at Jose in the background. <laughs> not too happy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you he's know, still not happy. About no that. I mean. We, we kind of laugh about it, and then Zemchinski will tell you it's not a laughing matter if it would have been safe in a tie tie in a tie ball game. Berkman flips to Zemchinski. A little smoother there. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. And Salas the right hand of warming up because he got the first two maybe he will get Ludwig. But that's the one thing about Zipchinski he's very capable of starting a game spot relieving you know closing out a, a victory being a left handed specialist but they know he can get a lot of right handed batters out. Strike one to Ludwig. You might wonder if Ludwig was swinging the bat a little bit better right now. Perhaps you would see the right hander. It's also kind of it's it's early and there's guys in that bullpen that need work and it wouldn't hurt Zipchinski to stretch out a little bit. Pitcher finished up the eighth inning with uh, getting the final out via the strikeout of Joey Votto and have a one two three here night. Oh and two to Ludwig. Bounces an off speed pitch. Zepchinski will bat second in the bottom of the ninth. Now the reason why to leave him out there with with no one on base don't have to do a double switch and you just they keep the ball in the ballpark it's in the ballpark but it's a base hit Ludwig finds a hole and he hits the ball the other way we were talking about that earlier. Molina is set up inside and the ball is outside and there you see that head right down on the, the swing and just shoot it to the opposite field. Good piece of hitting. Salas is coming in. Zepchinski will have to go talk to Jose Okendo now. Fernando Salas is the fourth Cardinal pitcher of the night on in relief of Mark Zepchinski. Two out hit for Ryan Ludwig. Brings in Salas, appearing in his seventh game. Staff leader in those appearances and kind of reminiscent of the game in Cincinnati, the final game of that series when Sepchinski left a runner 
on and Salas came in and gave up the game winning hit. Let's hope that history changes itself. No double switch employed here for Matheny so he'll just finish off this inning as he set the bat second in the bottom of the ninth and fouled back off the bat of Drew Stubbs who's one for three. Breaking ball strike two and we're told that Jose Okendo has yet to have his communication with Mark Zepchinski about the throw that he made to first base. That's worse because then you know it's still coming. <laughs> well he still has a runner on base and usually you don't talk to the pitcher who still has runners in play responsible for the runner at first. Check swing. A uh, rarity to this part at uh, this point that Stubbs doesn't have a strikeout yet. Came in with 12 strikeouts and 36 at bats. One for three tonight. Playing very deep in the outfield. There's your Baker's dozen. Strikeout number 13 on the season for Stubbs. The Cardinals with a chance to win it in the ninth. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by the state of Missouri tobacco quit line. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Cardinals with a run in the first. The Reds with an unearned run in the eighth. Cardinals batting in the bottom of the ninth. With a chance to win it. Daniel Descalzo. One for three will lead off. Logan Andrusek is on in relief of Johnny Cueto who was good. Kyle Loesch was better. Two errors in the Cardinals eighth. Counting for the Cincinnati Reds run. That was Descalzo who made the big crucial error to lead off that inning. And then Boggs messed up a bunt play for consecutive errors to start the eighth inning. Double play ball. Line drive to Descalzo. But then the base hit. 2 and 0 oh to Descalzo. Kamatsu in the on deck circle to bat for Fernando Salas. There's Eric Kamatsu, the Rule 5 pickup. Cardinals trying to defend their. World Championship, and here we are, tie ball game in the ninth. Daniel Descalzo's at bat in the World Series, and John Jay's at bat in the World Series, probably the most underrated positives of that whole series. Against Darren Oliver to allow that comeback to happen. Yep. Batting in the ninth here, full count. And the pitch. Inside ball four. Tough one to take, but Daniel Descalzo reaches base to start the ninth. Little cut fastball, Al, just off that inside corner. Well, you gotta have some guts to take this pitch, especially with the inconsistency of the umpire. Mm. And right there, after taking two 3 0 fastballs for strikes, then it gets a little cutter that. He lays off of. Descalzo runs well. Eric Kamatsu, who's never played above A ball or double A, never played above double A, a rule five selection right here. You would think in a bunting situation. He is. The bunt is almost caught by the catcher, Hannigan. Actually, Messerocco, who pinch ran for Hannigan. Messerocco was someone uh, prospect in their organization, rated as the top defensive catcher in the International League. His momentum had him going a step forward before he could 
pick up the ball and react and try and dive back for it. So new life for Kamatsu. Step out. Komatsu, a third place hitter for all the teams he played for in the minor leagues. He can just flat out hit. I wonder how many times he was called upon to bunt in the minor leagues. Star every place he went, taking a chance at him as a Rule 5 player. Bunting situation here. Pitch misses low. It's going to be real interesting when, when Alan Craig and Schumacher come back, you know, what the corresponding moves would be. And you can say that when line break coming back, you know what they're going to be. You know, you could when you have a Rule Five player, he has to stay on the major league roster the entire year. Hit and run. Employed by Mike Matheny. I like see in that, don't you? Sure do. But lots of would have to be clear waivers before the Cardinals could set him down, and that wouldn't happen. You've shown enough. And I guess you know one of the things is they really like him offensively but is he going to be an impact player so he's going to be more than just a singles hitter and an outfielder that can play all three outfield positions but would be maybe a fourth outfielder. Matsu strikes out. Doesn't get the bunt down does not execute the hit and run and swings through the high fastball. Well that's it you know you you've got to get that bunt down when you're called upon and. It's a tough assignment when you haven't played above double A, but it's a numbers game now. Tough assignment, but it's a tough league. This is the big leagues. Scalzo doesn't have a lot of speed, but when you have somebody as tall as Andrusik, you're usually slow to the plate. More of a smart runner than a fast runner. Correct. Call runs well. There's been three steals off this catcher, Mazzarocco, and they have all been successful. As I said, somebody as tall as Andrusik, usually slow to the plate. Kendall really flashed a lot of signs. Chris Maloney, the first base coach, talked to Daniel Descalso. What does Mike Matheny have in mind? Where he did a slide step, but it's my experience that that is a great advantage to the hitter. And the pitcher slide steps, they usually just don't have uh, the same command. Or Kind of rushing to the plate. A lot of times the ball doesn't go where they want it, and it's usually up a little bit easier to hit. One one pitch to Rafael for call. But first to throw to first. Fans never like that. Don't like it, and the reason why a pitcher will do that is to take the spring and the life out of the legs of a Potential base dealer. Ground ball to the right side. Over the head of Otto and in the right field. Descalzo is headed to third. And the Cardinals with runners at the corners in the ninth. Perfectly placed. Well, either way, call. like we're talking about, when a pitcher spends so much attention worrying about the runner at first. You sacrifice your stuff to the plate. Here the ball's up. He hits down on it. Gets that high bouncer chop over the infield, over the head of Votto. And Descalzo can read this perfectly in the corner that he can go over to third. So first and third and only one out. Not a lot of reaction, but just enough, isn't it? Pick your poison here, and they pick. Matt Holiday. They're going to walk Beltron to load the bases. He almost threw that ball away.
And that one. Another high throw. I'd be ready if I was Daniel Descalzo at third. Absolutely. Three for eight and a home run when Matt faces Andrusik. <laughs> and now he's waiting to jump and throws one down. <laughs> Dusty Baker has no one warming up at this point, so it's all holiday on Drusick. Well, let's name our Budweiser player of the game. We'll give it to Kyle Lowe. She was outstanding here tonight, Al. 90 pitches, seven zeros. You know, Kyle's pitched a lot of great games for the Cardinals, but I don't know if one could have been much better. As he was very, very sharp with all of his pitches. You know, off speed pitches were outstanding. Fastball was spotted up and down, in and out. And I just loved his way he was on that mound. He was very, very confident in himself, and it showed the way he pitched. 35,000 plus fans on their feet here at Bush Stadium. Hoping for the game to end right here. And for Matt Holiday to do it. Brian Price met with the entire infield and pitcher. Brian Price, the pitching coach for the Reds. Stalso 90 feet away from victory. Stay out of the double play. Not sure where that pitch was on Fox tracks, but the young catcher by jumping outside and then back over the middle of the plate might have shielded the umpire from seeing a low pitch. Popped up on the right side. Votto over towards the Cardinal bench. Makes the play. Right dead in the middle, and Holiday gets underneath it. So Lance Berkman with a chance to be the hero of the night. Remember his batting eye also. Very tough to fool him. Doesn't chase any pitches. Take strike one. One for three in, in his career against Andrusik. Our sinker runs at 0 and 2. Surprising to me. Only three career walk off hits. Me too. Should have at least four. Hit by pitch would help. <laughs> One and two to Berkman. The base is loaded. Bottom of the ninth, 1-1. One, one. Popped him up. Votto squeezes it. And we're going to the tenth. Top of the tenth, Jason Mott is the fifth Cardinal pitcher of the night. Cardinals were not able to score in the bottom of the ninth. They had a runner at third with just one out, but Matt Holliday and Lance Berkman both popping out to the right side. And that brings in Jason Mott, the Cardinal closer, who's been very good so far this season. We've seen the good fastball from him, Al, the good control. And no doubting right now, no question, no contest, no mystery. He's the closer and he's getting some work here tonight. 
And he's two for two in closing opportunities. Uh, Cardinal offense, which has been so good, best in the National League. And only look back and see the 12 stranded runners mm. through nine innings and missed opportunities all over the place. Devin Mezzarocco, pinch ran for Hannigan. Takes his first plate appearance and fouls the first delivery off. From Jason Mott. It's interesting where this young man was rated as the top prospect in their organization. I've seen publications that say he's going to have trouble hitting and he's he can catch defensively and I've seen the other publications say the opposite. Well he hits a little bit here. Lead off base hit. Seventh hit of the night for Cincinnati. See right there. Contact being made. Swing and follow through as he gets the lead off hit here in the tenth inning. Boy Harris. Pinch hit. So remember Willie Harris having a career night five for five hit night against the Cardinals. Remember that playing night. with Atlanta. Oh yeah. Couldn't get him out. Who is this guy? Called on the bunt here. He takes strike one from Jason Mott. Freeze in tight at third. They're going to try to get that lead runner. And he misses that delivery 0 and 2. So again one of those decisions does Dusty Baker take the bunt off does he ask his veteran pinch hitter Willie Harris to bunt with two strikes Cardinals are expecting at least half expecting that bunt freeze hasn't backed up much well, a guy like Harris should know that he has to get the bunt down every time he's called upon Maybe a sign that his manager didn't have confidence in him that Took it off, or at least that pitch, and we'll see if it's not back on 0-2. One for 17 on the young year. I believe you said the Cardinals bullpen needed some work, Al. They're getting it. I didn't want to get this much. Swing and a miss. That was by Harris. That fastball at 97. From Jason Mott. I'll get ahead and, and you see kind of up there around the letters. And that ball is it's hard to get on top of that pitch. Fans not out of energy. They still have enough to boo Brandon Phillips. But he Brandon, likes it. He I, likes told, it. I told Brian, Brandon I was going to ruin his his trip to St. Louis because I was going to tell everyone what a nice guy he is. They wouldn't boo him. And he goes, oh, I like booze. <laughs> but I, he is really a nice young man. Very talented player, too. The booze come from the brawl where he kind of was the instigator with some some Twitter comments. And then kind of escalated. You know, when he came to the plate, he kind of tapped Melina Shingard like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Melina didn't. Didn't like it. Let that be a lesson to you, Al. Be careful what you tweet. Well, I've, I've really taken it to heart. I can tell. I've realized that it's pretty, you can't make a mistake if you never tweet. But he takes a, he takes an entire family, you know, of Reds fans to spring training every year and all expenses on him. Swing and a miss. And when we were in Cincinnati a couple years ago, some young boy tweeted to him and he said, "You know, hey, I got my my little league game tonight, and the Reds had had a day game, and and he showed up, signed autographs for a couple a uh, couple hours, and I know there's times when he's tweeted, I'll be in the lobby at such and such. He doesn't drink, and so on. The, it was on the road, and you know, he sat there in the lobby and entertained." 
Reds fans or whoever wanted to, you know, to talk with him for a couple hours also. You are trying to make us like him. I would, I would, I did it before he signed his contract. Is what my thought process was, but now that he's signed for six years, ah, he's the enemy booing. <laughs> oh, and to the count. Nice to watch Jason Mott develop. And something about throwing that last pitch in the final game of a World Series helps you develop even more. Uh, no doubt about that, but Ricky, we both know how tough it is to develop secondary pitches at the major league level. Mm -hmm. And doing it when he kind of uh, doing it as a as a closer and and you see a guy that closed out the 2006 World Series. And on opening day here we had the gentleman that closed out 67. Give in 82. Bruce Suter. And how about Suter doing it with a fastball against Gorman Thomas not his famous split finger. Many kids dream of that. I think they got room. Well, I guess looking at that, they probably don't have room for one more now. They have to build an extension on that uh, world championship area out there to fly one more. They'll find a way. Yep. 2 2 the count. Now 3 2. Well, it didn't look like he finished that pitch very well. Now, count is full to Brandon Phillips. Do you run? Devin Messeracco. He's a catcher, but he did go into pinch run for their starting catcher tonight. He is going, swing and a miss. The throw to second. You're not going to get there. Descalzo runs him down, strike him out, throw him out, run him down, tag him out. Double play. Bottom of the tenth is next. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the 10th inning, game one of a three-game series with Cincinnati. Hometown hero, World Series hero. David Freeze will bat first for St. Louis here in the 10th. And the new pitcher is Sam LeCure. Last season, it was his first in, in the big leagues, first full season in the major leagues. He made 43 appearances. Four and three quarter ERA and four starts and three and a third in his 39 relief appearances. He is from Jeff City, if memory serves me. I know he's a Missourian. Nice look at Bush Stadium. Born in Jeff City, resides in Centertown, Missouri. You mentioned the Cardinals have had trouble finding that offense. Scored in the first inning and zeros since then. David Freeze. Did a long drive to left field in the eighth inning. Just didn't quite carry. That was with Logan Andrusik on the mound. He's 0 for 3 with a walk. Molina and Jay. Plenty of weapons left on the Cardinals bench. 
Komatsu pinch hit in the ninth. The only bench player Mike Matheny has used. Dusty Baker has Todd Frazier and Chris Heisey. Chris Heisey was showed up beyond deck of circle but was pulled back before being announced. And you don't think the outfield could get any deeper. They're almost in the Metro East. Two two to freeze. Watch out. Freeze may have been looking for a pitch away. Full count to freeze. Bottom of the tenth. Ball four. Walks in extra innings. Lead to losses. Dusty Baker. 19 years as a major league manager. Mike Matheny zero. Runner Tyler Green, who led the Cardinals in steals last season, was 11 for 11, and over his career has never been thrown out. He's 16 for 16. You would think you want to get him in scoring position. Molina, very good with the bat. And a throw to first, Green's back safely. Good lead for Green. Molina pulls that. The bat, but it's a strike on the outside corner. Didn't like that pitch. Sure looked like it was wide, and he definitely pulled the bat back. He's looking down at Kendo. Mr. Maloney whispering in the ears of Tyler Green at first. One attempt back to the mound. McCure has it. Can't get Tyler Green because of his speed. And the successful sacrifice by Molina puts the winning run at second base and the speed of Tyler Green with a good jump. Well, I thought they I thought they had a play, but if you're the pitcher, you've got to be sure you can get that lead man. Now look at where Tyler Green. So he had plenty of time to get him out, but he just didn't have the confidence. So he thought about it, and he I think he would have been out. And with Molina running, it would have it might have been a double play. But as it turns out, successful sack for Molina, and they put the winning run on on second base. And now they'll walk John Jay. intentionally and it's still what speed will do for you at least scares you yes. into thinking boy I don't want to make a mistake here and liqueur chose the easy way to get the sacrifice and get the out of Molina at first base and at least you set up a possibility of a double play to get out of the inning. So 
So good speed at second base and Tyler Green. John Jay doesn't matter. He's the runner at first. And Don Marshall, their closer, warming up. And they assigned Ryan Matson to be their closer, but before the season start, that's Bray and Bray the left hander. Arredondo, the right hander. It's been a rough year early on for closers throughout Major League Baseball. Ryan Matson was signed to be the closer here in Cincinnati. And these three pitchers all dealing with Tommy John, Madsen, Brian Wilson for San Francisco, and Soria for the Royals. Both Brian Wilson and Soria are having their second Tommy John surgery. So Bill Bray will come in here. Will inherit two runners on a first and second and one out. Only pitch an inning and a third. Seemed like he get, did most of that against the Cardinals. So Daniel Descalzo with a chance to win it here. That just looks bad. Come into a game and you got to call timeout and figure out what's going on, what's the sign for the runner at second. Cozart holding Green very close to second base, trying to keep him from getting a good jump on a potential base hit. Bill Bray has pitched in three games. The first game of the year, he pitched an inning third against the St. Louis. Then his next two games, he faced one batter. He walked one and gave up a hit in the other. So he hasn't recorded an out since April the 9th. Good arm and right, Jay Bruce. Ludwig, Ludwig very accurate arm and left. Average arm in center in Stubbs. And it's 3 0 to Descalzo. So one pitch away from three consecutive outings. Left handed specialist having that, you know, one batter to retire. And he's one pitch away from walking, you know, not retiring any of the three. And he may have to face Lou Gehrig, who's waiting on deck. Might could change to go to Wally Pip. Winning run at second. Daniel, who really hit left-handers pretty well last season, but we've seen that front shoulder fly open a few times this year. Fielders shallowed a bit, hoping for a chance to throw out Green. Cozart pinching Green in at the bag. He represents the winning run for St. Louis. And it's ball four.
interesting that Matt Carpenter and you see the 409 average nine for 22 got his first major league home run on Sunday and he had five RBIs and he's got 10 RBIs he could take over the lead. <laughs> Did have the right handed bat of Shane Robinson or Tony Cruz the backup catcher infield even further in or excuse me the outfield strike one to Matt Carpenter has shown that he hangs very well against lefties Mike Matheny giving him a chance to win it here in the bottom of the tenth Bill Bray to Carpenter it almost hit it. If you could only train your mind to let that ball hit you. It's just natural reflexes. You got to flinch a little bit. You tried to turn into it, but the last second you kind of wait a minute. This guy's throwing 90 miles an hour. That's going to hurt. Spin away. Crowd on their feet again. They were disappointed in the ninth, hoping for better in the tenth. Good swing there. Cardinals do nine innings if it's stranded 12, and they have three more sitting out there. Pretty good numbers for a homestand. Seven for 12. Carpenter's ready. Two and two. Cardinals at base is loaded in the ninth. Holiday and Berkman popped out with one out. How far off the line Votto is, the first baseman. Scott Rowland at third base, well off the line. In the dirt, but in the front of Messeraco as he kept that ball in front of him. That could have been a game winner right there for St. Louis. That game saver by Messeraco. He set up looking for the ball outside. 58 footer and got enough of him to keep it in front of him. And Tyler Green has to retreat. <laughs> now Mike Matheny's learning about Tums, Alka Selsu. Roll legs. Doesn't get any better than this. And now we get to do it again. Full count, bases loaded, bottom of the tenth. Three for five. And when he didn't get a hit, he struck out. Game on the line here. Line drive to right field. Jay Bruce catches it. Strong arm throw to the plate, and he is safe at the plate, and the Cardinals win it. Tyler Green beats the throw. Sacrifice fly for Carpenter. It's early, but it's never too early to celebrate on the field a victory. Kind of a mild victory celebration right there. They act like they've done it before. <laughs> and the Cardinals have. World champions a year ago, and they just picked up their eighth victory with three defeats. Lotion outstanding start. But the Cardinals win it in the bottom of the 10, thanks to Matt Carpenter and Tyler Green scoring the winning run. Post game is coming up next.
game is over. It's a walk-off winner for the Cardinals in the bottom of the 10th. Cal Elder and I here at Lumiere Place to break it all down from the stadium sports bar and grill. Any way you get a win, you get a win, you'll take it. There's so much emotion, so much happening in the late innings. We almost forget about a great outing by Kyle Loesch. Lots of good fastballs we'll take a look at. More from Cal coming up on Cardinals Live. Plus, after the Cardinals take two of three from the Reds in Cincy last week, the Reds looking to return the favor in St. Louis. will tell you, though, why the Cardinals are able to defend their home turf in game one. Plus, just how good has Kyle Loesch been? We'll go inside the numbers of his first three starts. And it hasn't just been Loesch. The bullpen has been lights out, too. We'll tell you why. And we'll take you back to Bush Stadium to hear from manager Mike Matheny and Cardinal player reaction from inside the clubhouse. It's Daffy Duck's birthday. Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. We'll settle that next on Cardinals Live. <laughs>